The first inn on the walk, Inner Temple, is reached by following the map from Blackfriar Station along Tudor Street and entering through the Tudor Street Gate. Before the 18th century, the area to the east of Inner Temple was known as Alsatia, a lawless area full of thieves and desperados who frequently clashed with the lawyers who worked and lived nearby. In 1691, Inner Temple tried to break up the Tudor Street Gate to stop Alsatians from entering. However, the latter attacked the workers, killing one and knocking down the sheriff who arrived to try to restore order. There are four inns of court collectively serving as the headquarters of the branch of the legal profession called as barristers. These wigged and black-gowned advocates have had a virtual monopoly on the rights of audience in the English courts since medieval times, and a student wishing to become a barrister at law must be affiliated to one of the inns, Inner and Middle Temple, Lincoln's Inn and Gray's Inn. Upon qualification, the student is called to the bar, originally the railing that enclosed a judge in the courtroom. Inner Temple's origins, like those of the other three inns, are obscure. Some have suggested the inns began after an ordinance and placed the barristers under the control of the judges rather than the church. The temple area, covering inner, middle, and outer temple, was once owned by the Knights Templar, the religious military order that was founded in Jerusalem in the 11th century during the Crusades. Originally founded to protect pilgrims visiting the Holy Land, the Templars built up a vast network of estates and mercantile interest throughout Europe and crusader kingdom of Outremer. the english branch of the order moved to this area in the 12th century from their original headquarters in holborn and their lands stretched from what is now fleet street right down to the thames however from 13th century a number of european monarchs supported by pope clement v decided the Templars were becoming too powerful for their own good and began to persecute them. In 13th century, the Order's London properties were taken over by the Crown and given over to another similar religious military order also founded in Jerusalem, the Knights Hospitallers. Covering three acres, this is one of the city's most attractive open spaces and is noted by Dickens in Barnaby Rouge. Who enters here leaves noise behind. The gates date from 1730 and are adorned with the figures of a griffin and pegasus taken respectively from the coats of arms of Gray's Inn and Inner Temple which have historically had close ties. All along the walk, you will frequently see the arms of each inn. Ahead is paper buildings, originally constructed in 16th century, although the current building states from 18th century. In Dickens' Barnaby Rouge, the character Sir John Chester lived here. In addition to featuring in many novels, Inner Temple has also had many members who have become more famous as writers, including John Mortimer, Bram Stoker, and possibly the poet Geoffrey Chaucer.
the gardens were also once home to the Royal Horticultural Society Great Spring Show during the 19th century before moving west and becoming today's Chelsea Flower Show. Each inn has its own hall, normally close to the public, where examinations are held, as well as the ceremonies in which students are called to the bar, and formal dinners, because back then, students are required to attend a certain number of dinners each year as part of their qualification. We continued on the southwest to Elm Court, where a plaque on the wall indicated that it, this was once part of the original Templar buttery or food store. And up ahead, it has been renovated way back in 2016 for a better view. Thank you. 
Up ahead is a distinctive round nave of Temple Church. This church is the only substantial remnant of the Knights Templars' occupation of the area and was built by them to resemble the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The church, recently featured in Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code, is shared by both Inner and Middle Temple. Despite much rebuilding over the centuries, including after the Blitz, it remains a fascinating place. The 13th century effigies of Templar Knights are the most striking feature. There is also a stairwell that contains a former cell where old disobedient knights were held and is said sometimes starved to death. Outside the church is a column marking where the Great Fire of 1666 finally stopped on the western side of the city and the statue of the two knights riding a single horse commemorates the Templars' frugality. The, origi the order's original title was the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and the later Templar name was derived from the fact the Knights' first headquarters were situated on the ruins of Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem.